ओके सो लेट स्टार्ट विद सुपर क्विक रिविजन ऑफ द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर दैट इज सप्लाई अंडर जीएसटी अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर कंसेप्चुअली विच इज गोइंग टू यूज इन सो मेनी चैप्टर्स अहेड रेफरेंसेज आर गोइंग टू बी देर एंड येस कंसेप्चुअली तो दिस चैप्टर इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वाई आर वी स्टार्टिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर चैप्टर दिस चैप्टर इज गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट वेदर अ पर्टिकुलर ट्रांजेक्शन ओके वेदर अ पर्टिकुलर ट्रांजेक्शन इज अ सप्लाई और नॉट अ सप्लाय ओके मैम वॉट डू यू मीन बाय दैट सप्लाई और नॉट अ सप्लाई जस्ट कीप वन स्मॉल लॉजिक इन योर माइंड इफ देर इज नो सप्लाय ओके इफ एनी वेर इफ इन द पर्टिकुलर चैप्टर वी स्टडी दैट दिस पर्टिकुलर ट्रांजेक्शन इज नॉट अ सप्लाय देन यू जस्ट हैव टू कीप इन माइंड दैट इफ इट इज नॉट अ सप्लाय ओके इफ इट इज नॉट अ सप्लाय देन देर विल बी नो जी एस टी लाइबिलिटी एप्लीकेबल ऑन इट ओके नॉट बींग अ सप्लाय इज डिफरेंट एंड देन गेटिंग एक्जेप्टेड इज डिफरेंट ओके नॉट बींग अ सप्लाय फर्स्ट वी हैव टू सी वेदर it is a supply or it is not a supply okay if it is not a supply forget about it no gst will be applicable if it is a supply then it can so happen that either it can be a taxable supply or there can be an exemption notification for the same are you clear with this okay so predominantly and first of all we need to understand whether a particular transaction is a supply or not a supply okay we have got important definitions here which you can just refer it once okay i am going to section number Seven, everyone. From where the main chapter starts. Now, section number seven. Section number seven talks about the concept of supply and that that is the meaning and scope of supply. Now, here specifically, okay, specifically, section number seven one, section number seven one a, section number seven two, and section number seven three. okay these are super duper important section number basically section number 7 year is the most important sec section yes and whenever i am referring to section number 7 year in any particular section in this particular chapter then they mean that this refers to the cgst act okay this refers to the cgst act then ma'am what about the interstate transactions is it not applicable to that means what about that so just let let me just tell you that whatever provisions we are studying in relation to supply under section 7 of the cgs cgst act the same provisions have been made applicable okay supply provisions have been made applicable to the interstate supply also um, so it has been made applicable to the igst act also yes chalo now let's uh, let's uh, understand everyone let's start with section now this this thing is a summary table as you can see here okay all the provisions have been included here now let's uh, start understanding everything here in detail okay first of all section number 71a okay 71a normally talks about supply means this particular transaction this particular transaction will be considered as a supply ma'am what will be considered as a supply supply that is a very broad thing okay everyone different types of supply that that can be sale that can be transfer that can be a barter transaction that can be an exchange transaction there can be a license transaction there can be a rental transaction so sale transfer lease disposal exchange barter etc any type of supply okay this is whatever terms i have told you this these are purely illustrative this is not exhaustive okay any type of sale or any type of transfer any type of exchange barter any such type of transaction which we have done okay which, which can be of goods also which can be of uh, any supply of goods or service okay if any such transaction has been done for a consideration okay consideration definition we have already uh, discussed in the main session also and it is given in your uh, definitional point also if any such supply has been done for a consideration in return and which is done in the course or in the furtherance of business means that should be done not for your personal purpose that should be done for the business purpose okay three parameters to be fulfilled first of all there should be supply of goods or service okay then it should be done for a consideration and it should be done in the course of business if all the three points have been fulfilled then in such case we can say that that transaction okay such a transaction will be considered as a supply as per section number 71a okay three conditions can you see this everyone supply of goods or service plus there should be a consideration plus it should be in the course of business we have got so many examples given up here okay now 
few different points which I should be discussing here in the revision video also that is uh, about consideration okay first one let's uh, dis let's try to understand for the purpose of consideration now uh, let's talk about a charitable institution or let's talk about uh, donations received by the charitable institution okay let's say Arpita is there and then there is a charitable institution Arpita is donating some amount okay Arpita is donating some amount to the charitable institution out of love affection out of that thing okay because i want to do charitable activity so i donated something to the charitable institution without expecting anything in return okay without expecting anything in return so in that case so in that case the donation which is received by the charitable institution okay donation which is received by the charitable institution without quid pro quo you must have heard about this term okay earlier okay that is without something in return then in that case the amount that is received by the charitable institution will not be considered as a consideration are you clear with this therefore whatever amount of donation the charitable institution has received that will not be liable to gst because there is no consideration involved are you understanding this okay another example that i will give you uh, let's say there is a company okay let's say there is a company xyz limited xyz limited gave uh, some donations to the charitable institution okay and in return in return the charitable institution has put a holding or it has returned somewhere you know in the office of the charitable trust or maybe near the benches it is returned that this was donated by xyz limited a company which is engaged into uh, let's say manufacturing of textiles something like that is return means can we say in return in return charitable institution is kind of doing an advertisement for this yes so can we say there is something in return if there is something in return then yes this will be called as a consideration and this transaction will be chargeable to gst are you able to understand this yes that is the first point which i wanted to discuss examples have been given multiple example n number of examples for every point is given in your book that's the best part yes then the next one see what is this next thing uh, next one is let's say let's say uh, i am an artist okay i am an art artist let's say and i have made some paintings etc and i want to send these uh, paintings to some art gallery where it is going to be shown for the purpose of exhibitions etc okay so art gallery person told me okay arpita madam you can send the uh, whatever paintings etc and if any customer likes it during exhibition we will sell it and we will remit the consideration to you after deducting our charges etc i said okay fine no problem now 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 the question arises here now the question arises here when i am sending my art items to that particular gallery at that time will it be considered as a supply or it will not be considered as a i am doing it in the course of my business yes there is a supply yes there is a sale or there is a transfer of that particular uh, paintings etc yes but am i going to receive the consideration now or is it fixed that i'm going to receive the consideration answer is no because there is no consideration that is flowing from that art gallery to the artist okay this will i will receive when will i receive this okay when will i receive the consideration i will receive the consideration only only if it is sold so this transaction even if i have physically sent my paintings to that particular gallery still it will not be considered still it will not be considered as a supply right so ma'am how can you send it like there should be some supporting document now if you're sending the uh, do, uh, goods goods i can say goods uh, from your premises yes you can use a delivery chalan right you can use a delivery chalan along with the e-bill and you can send it but this will now not be considered as a supply only when only when this particular transaction uh, materializes only when there is a customer ready to take my particular product then only this will be considered as a supply are you clear with this everyone yes and uh, yes so in the section number seven one a three parameters where the supply of goods or services that should there should be a consideration for that and the next one it should be in the course or furtherance of business okay business definition is also given in the uh, beginning of the chapter so uh, if all the three points are fulfilled okay this is a very broad point huh? everything basically what are they trying to tell here is everything here every supply of goods or services done for a consideration in the course or furtherance of business this will be considered as a supply okay exceptions etc we are yet to do 
चल देन गोइंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट नेक्स्ट पॉइंट इज ऑल्सो एन इंक्लूजन पॉइंट इंक्लूजन पॉइंट मीन्स इट विल बी कंसिडर्ड एज अ सप्लाई दैट इज सेक्शन नंबर सेवन वन डबल ए okay as of now just go on understanding then i will show you a summary chart of the section number 7 with the help of which you will be able to recollect each and every point okay section 7 1 a uh, what do you what what is given in this particular section number 7 1 a any such transaction okay any such activity or any such transaction which is done by a person other than an individual okay which is done by a person other than uh, its individual with its members or to its members or its constituents okay to its members we can uh, say it like that or vice versa that is any transaction done by the members okay for any particular association any particular transaction done by the members with its entity are you clear with this yes so of uh, acha definitely for a consideration definitely for a consideration and yes in the course of business then in such a case even such transactions will be considered as a uh, supply okay ma'am can you give an example for that yes you must have heard about cooperative housing societies okay cooperative housing society cooperative housing society is providing some services to its members at a concessional price okay or cooperative society is selling some product to its members cooperative society housing society is a particular entity and its members are separate entity first you need to understand that cooperative society is one particular person and its members are another person now whenever any particular transaction takes place between these two persons okay any particular transaction takes place between these two persons then you cannot say that these are the members of the same entity na even if these people are the members of the same residential entity then to these will be considered as two separate persons and that will be considered as if the transaction is taking between two different persons and yes now again there is a supply of goods or service okay for which there is a consideration that is going to be paid and which is done in the course of business then in that case even such transaction even such transaction will be considered as a supply are you able to understand this yes now let's say let's say just for example a member of a housing society okay or a member of a joint venture you must have heard about joint venture a member of a joint venture is giving a plant and machinery on hire to the joint venture okay you cannot say that i have given it to my own entity no okay even if you say that for the purpose of gst that joint venture and that partner in the joint venture or that joint venture and the member of the joint venture will be considered as two separate persons and whenever this type of transaction takes place between the joint venture and its members okay then in that case it will be still considered as a supply okay so ma'am why what was the need to mention this point separately the need here arised because uh, before this before this it was considered it it was assumed it was assumed that if any transaction takes place like between example huh, between a uh, association and its members or between a joint venture and its members etc then they were telling that we are doing transaction with ourselves okay we are doing transaction with ourselves therefore there will be no gst so they clarified that no that joint venture entity and that member both of them are different persons and therefore there will be gst applicable are you able to understand this yes then going on to the next section that is section number 7 1b important okay section number 7 1b is important see what is this particular this is one of the exceptional point okay section 7 1b says that if you are importing any services importing means we are uh, imp uh, taking any services from a place outside india outside our taxable territory okay where we have paid the consideration okay i am taking some services let's say i am taking some it services or let's say i am taking some architect services is from a place outside india for which i am paying the consideration also can we say there is a supply yes there is a supply for which there is a consideration involved but ma'am then what is the exceptional point exceptional point is whether or not in the course or furtherance of business okay what did we study in the earlier two points now what was happening whatever transaction we were doing we were doing in the course of business only okay but the transaction which is mentioned in section number 71b this transaction if you have imported only services are not goods if you have imported any services for which you have paid the consideration but it can be for personal use also or it can be for business use also then in such case then in such case still this even if even if it is for personal purpose even if it is for personal purpose then too it will be considered as a supply okay very simple example very simple example i wanted to get my house uh, ka interior decoration done okay for which i took the services of an architect from outside india now 
होम होम इज फॉर द पर्सनल यूज देन वॉट एवर अमाउंट आई है वॉट एवर ट्रांजेक्शन आई हैव एंटर्ड इन टू विद दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्किटेक्ट दिस विल बी कंसिडर्ड एज अ सप्लाई Are you clear with this? Okay, can we say this is exception to seven one a? Because in seven one a we studied that if there is any supply of service for which there is a consideration or not, but it should be done in the course of business. But here they are telling that no, 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 no. Let's let's exclude one particular point that if we imported any services, be it for personal purpose or be it for business purpose, then too it will be considered as a supply. Are you clear till here? Yes. Then after that, then after that, section number seven one C. Okay, seven one C is again important. Seven one C talks about activities without consideration. Okay, again exception. What was common in all the points that we have done till now? In all the points done till now, consideration was mandatory. That is, there should be some consideration involved. Now here we are studying second exception. Next ex exception. That is the ne next set of transactions which will be done without consideration, but still. it will be considered as a supply very clear with this yes now in that in that see now these transactions deemed supply okay means there is going to be a supply of goods or services where there will be no consideration involved means there is going to be a supply but nothing in return but yes it will be done in the course of business let's try to identify let's try to understand what what were the four transactions uh, there in this now these four tran these transactions are mentioned in your schedule number 1 okay schedule number 1 to the cgst act in that para 1 if there is any permanent transfer or disposal of business assets okay if we are transferring if we are selling any particular business assets permanently where input tax credit was already claimed on it means when we had purchased okay when we had purchased that particular capital asset we took input tax credit because we would have paid taxes on it we took the benefit of that we took the credit of the same but now we are selling it off okay if you are selling it off and even if it is sold okay even if it is sold for zero consideration even if it is sold for zero consideration means i have given it for free to someone okay example example holding company transferring it to subsidiary company i am transferring to any other person for zero consideration then to this will be considered okay provided provided itc was taken on it okay provided itc was taken on it, then to it will be considered as a supply and if it was considered as a supply then can we say there will be gst applicable on it ma'am why so because you have already taken the tax benefit on it right if you have already taken the input tax credit at the time of purchase so can we say at the time of sale there should be gst applicable on the same yes okay please remember this point provided itc was taken on the same next point next point was para number 2 to schedule number 1 that is supply same supply of goods or services again ah supply of goods or services for no consideration okay when this transaction is between related persons okay when this transaction is between me and my related persons or if this transaction is between distinct persons two terms to be remembered here when the transaction is between related persons or when the transaction is between distinct persons but obviously the transaction is done for zero consideration no consideration and if the transaction is done in the course or furtherance of business okay the common thing here is in whatever transactions we are going to study here there will be no consideration involved but it will be done in the course of business okay related party transactions or related person transactions are uh, given up here okay now let's say if uh, there are two partners in a partnership firm okay if there are two partners in a partnership firm then the partners are called as the partners are called as related persons employer employee are called as related persons okay if there is a third person who is holding at least 25% voting power in two of the entities then these two entities or these two companies will be called as related person a third person a third person is controlling both of them then these both of them will be called as related person uh, same family members okay same family members will be called as a related person one one of them one of them is influencing or one of them is controlling the other then in that case these persons will be called as related person so if the transaction let's say there is a transaction between employer and employee okay let's say there is a transaction between employer and employee then we'll say that this transaction is done between related persons and if it is done between related persons now listen see ah huh? see the logic of introducing if it is done between related persons can the prices be fluctuated or can the prices be tricked or can we influence the prices yes so they are telling even if you have done it for free okay then to this will be called as a 
supply. Are you clear with this? Yes. And another thing, another thing. Have you heard about sole selling agent? Agent. Okay. Like in businesses, in businesses, I am the principal, and then I have appointed an agent to do these particular transactions. So even principal agent, these two are called as related. Persons. Okay, so if the transaction is done between related persons, or if the transaction is done between distinct persons, now what do you mean by distinct persons? Okay, just try to understand. What do you mean by distinct persons? Now uh, we'll study more about this when we do the registration chapter. But we uh, we should be knowing that we have already studied also that GST is a PAN based registration. Okay, one PAN. Uh, like uh, let's say let's say i am a particular individual and i want to i have my pan and i want to get registered under gst okay so on the basis of my pan i will be given a gst number okay i will be given a gst registration now can there be a possibility that like my head office or my first office is in mumbai maharashtra and now i wish to open a branch in gujarat possible then in that case can i say entity is the same so pan will be one only Okay, but now since the state is changing, since the uh, state of the branch is changing, then in that case, then in that case, can I say we'll have to take separate registration for that particular state? Okay, for that Gujarat branch, I will have to take another GST registration, but that will be linked to the same PAN. So one PAN and multiple GST registration we are talking about. Yes, if this has happened, okay, if this has happened, let's say uh, one office is in Maharashtra, one office is in Gujarat, then these two entities are having two separate registrations. Then in that case, then in that case, if there is any transaction, stock related transactions between two branches, if any such any any type of transaction happens between these two branches. Then in that case, it will be considered as a, uh, 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 then this particular branch will be considered as a distinct person. And any transaction happening between these two persons will be uh, considered as a supply. Are you clear with this? Achha, then uh, uh, one more example. Can there be a possibility? Can there be a possibility that uh, I am here in Maharashtra? Okay, I am engaged into supply of this AC remotes. I have another office. Okay, I have another office which I have started in let's say Madhya Pradesh. Okay, let's say Madhya Pradesh and in Madhya Pradesh from that particular office, I am doing supply of alcoholic liquor. Possible? Now, if I am doing supply of alcoholic liquor from there, alcoholic liquor is totally outside the purview of GST. So, I am not liable, right, when I am not liable to take the registration of that particular branch. Okay, because there is a non-taxable supply that is happening from there. So, in such a case, so in such a case, Still, still, can there be some transaction between Mumbai branch or Maharashtra branch and that Madhya Pradesh branch? Yes. So, in that case, so in that case, even if, even if that entity is an unregistered entity under GST, still that will be called as establishment of distinct persons. Okay, and any transaction between establishment of distinct persons, even if it is done without consideration, it will be considered as a supply. Okay, now let's say I have one of my branches here in Mumbai, Maharashtra. Okay, one of my offices, one of my offices in Mumbai, Maharashtra and I plan to start one more office in Pune, Maharashtra. Okay, within the same state. Now, if you are opening one more office within the same state, you are not mandatorily required to obtain a registration for that. Separate registration is required when you go in another state. Okay, but if you are there within the same state and if you open another office in the same state, then normally separate registration is not required. But still, if I want to take a separate registration, can we take? Answer is yes. Okay, if you have taken separate registration within the same state, okay, then in such a case, the any transaction between Mumbai branch and any transaction between Pune branch, even that will be considered as uh, coming under this particular Schedule 1 transaction. And even if it is done without any consideration, then too, there will be uh, this, uh, this transaction uh, will be called as a supply. Are you clear with this, everyone? Yes. Okay. So, uh, conclusion of para 2 to schedule number 1 is if there is any transaction, if there is any supply of goods or services between related persons or between distinct persons or between establishment of distinct persons, then in that and if it is done in the course or of uh, business etc., then in that case, yes, it will be considered as a supply. Okay. Now, in this some special points to be discussed here is what did we discuss about employer and employee? What did I tell you about employer and employee? For employer and employee, those two persons are considered as related persons. Therefore, if there is any supply of goods or services between employer and employee, then that will not be liable. 
okay uh, sorry uh, then in that case it should be liable to gst because those two persons are related persons even if it is given free okay even if there is no consideration involved uh, th that will be considered as a supply but but we will study further in schedule number 3 okay we'll study in now just like we're doing schedule number one we'll study some negative list item in schedule number three where employer and employee are included in the negative list okay so schedule one told that if there is any transaction between employer and employee that will be liable to gst but schedule three says that no remove employer and employee uh, transactions from the purview of supply okay so uh, conclusion conclusion where is my pen huh conclusion here is uh, if there is any supply of goods or services between an employer and employee as per schedule 1 it was considered as a supply but the conclusion is schedule 3 is going to be applicable therefore it is not liable to supply okay but exception okay exception to that now can there be a possibility that there is a gift given by the employer to the employee okay if the value of gifts are up to rupees 50000 in value okay if the value of goods is equal to rupees 50000 in value in a particular financial year given by an employer to the employee now gifts are given for no consideration okay gift is given by employer to the employee then normally just now what we studied okay just now what we studied was any transaction between employer and employee will not be considered as a supply okay but specifically they have told you for gifts any gifts given by employer to employee will be uh, taxable under gst but but if the gifts value does not exceed rupees 50000 in a year then it will not be considered as a supply so they are telling that small gifts small gift given by employer to employee is not considered as a supply apart from that apart from that if the aggregate value of gifts given by an employer to an employee in a year if that exceeds rupees 50000 then the entire amount okay then the entire amount will be liable for gst because it will now be considered as a supply okay now perquisites what about perquisites can we say per you must have heard about perquisites right perquisites given by the employer to the employee can we say this is done as per the contractual agreement signed between the employer and employee this is because the services are being rendered by the employee to the employer right so this so this is this is just like uh, uh, this is this will be just like a transaction covered under schedule number three therefore therefore there will be no gst applicable on the are you clear till here okay so we we are there under okay don't forget the don't forget the link we are there under schedule one okay schedule one the transact there is some supply of goods or services done in the course of business but there is no consideration involved still it is deemed as supply okay in that first point the first point that we did was permanent disposal or transfer of business assets on which input tax credit okay uh, on which input tax credit has been already claimed then in that case that will be considered as a supply okay don't forget the word business assets then after that we went to para number two what did we study there was any supply of goods or services that was done between related persons or between distinct persons or establishment of distinct persons then too it will be considered as a supply exception was employer and employee but in case of gifts gifts given by employer to the employee up to 50,000 not a supply more than 50,000 entire amount will be considered as a supply okay and then there was a uh, there was a small circular introduced here now if there is a person called as original equipment manufacturer okay let's take the example of uh, samsung okay just an example original equipment manufacturer is there who is manufacturing mobile phones tabs etc okay it wants to get a particular component component of that particular mobile phone manufactured okay so it gives the work to a person called as component manufacturer okay component manufacturer in china let's say for example and uh, this component manufacturer will comp will manufacture that part and give it to the original equipment manufacturer okay so now in this case in this case component manufacturer said that sir i need a mold i need a mold for the size that what size or what uh, specification of component should i be making so some free molds okay dhancha what we call in hindi okay that sancha dhancha whatever you want to call it okay if that mold is given by the original equipment manufacturer to the component manufacturer that was given by oem to the component manufacturer free of cost okay we just sent it to the component manufacturer so that he can understand the size dimensions etc from it okay now can we now can we say there is a supply 
okay there is a supply that was sent free of course there is no consideration or not but are these two persons related persons answer is no if these two persons are not related persons okay if these two persons are not related person can we say this is not considered as a supply yes because because if the transaction is done between related person without consideration then only it is considered as a supply right so can we say as per section number 71a the point of consideration is missing and if the point of consideration is missing then in such a case then in such a case it will not be considered as a supply okay please remember this please remember this because this oem and component manufacturer we are going to use it multiple times okay we are going to use it multiple times ahead in our indirect taxes are you clear till here everyone yes okay then going on to the next one that is para 3 para 3 to schedule number 1 okay third point para 3 to schedule number 1 if there is if there is remember i just told you about principal and agent point there yes what did we study for principal and agent principal and agent was considered as what principal and agent were considered as uh, sole selling agent sole selling agent etc was considered as the related person okay now i am talking about an agent okay now let's say everyone just try to understand okay i am uh a put, uh, i am a you are b okay let's assume it that way i am a you are b okay i have appointed i i am generally in, uh, involved in selling goods okay i sell the goods i manufacture the goods and i sell the goods i am involved in selling the goods now i appointed a person called as agent okay i appointed a person called as mr agent i told him that i am manufacturing goods in very good quantity you please find the buyers for me he said okay sir i will uh, do that work he is acting as an agent okay now in this case he is such an agent okay he is we have already discussed in the main lectures i'm just repeating it here he is such a agent who is going to okay if let's say he finds you okay you are the prospective buyer he finds you okay means can i say he is helping me to identify a customer yes and he is such an agent who is going to uh, ish, like sell the goods to you on his own account okay he is going to sell the goods to you on his own account means what means what he will purchase the goods from me okay then he will sell the goods to you he is not telling me that arpita mr b is the buyer you directly sell the goods to him he is not acting merely as a commission agent okay he is taking all the risk he is taking all the liabilities on him and then he is transferring the goods to you he is selling the goods to you and invoice also okay invoice also will be issued by him only means first arpita will sell it to the agent and then agent will sell it to mr b okay if he is such an agent okay then only he is going to come under this para number 3 to schedule 1 okay then only he is going to come under para 3 to schedule 1 and if there is any supply okay if there is any supply of goods by a principal to his agent okay or by an agent to his principal means i'm purchasing from my agent okay then in such a case if there is any transactions if there is any transaction even if it is done for no consideration okay even if it is done for no consideration it is done in the course of business then too it will be considered as a supply are you clear with this yes okay but listen again i am telling you if he is such a agent who is not issuing the invoice in his names okay who is not uh, the title is not getting transferred in the name of agent then he is not falling under para 3 to schedule number 1 very clear with this yes okay then after that going to the next last point that is para 4 to schedule number 1 okay last point but important point para number 4 to schedule number 1 talks about importation of services did we just study something about importation of services yes what did we study about importation of services we studied that if we are importing that we studied in deemed supply 71b right if we are importing any services for which we are paying the consideration whether or not in the course, course or furtherance of business okay now here in para number 4 we are importing some services for no consideration okay clear bifurcation you have got there in 71b it was considered as a supply as it involved consideration now here there is no consideration involved 
and the person from you are, whom you are importing the services that person is my related person okay importing means from outside india means i am importing it from my related person or from my other establishment outside india okay my other establishment outside india from them if i am importing any services which i am going to use it in the course or or furtherance of business for no consideration then in such a case it it will still be considered okay it will still be considered as a supply are you clear with this okay let's say let's say i wanted to get i wanted to get the interior decoration of my office done i wanted to get the interior decoration of my office done for which i took architect services from my related person who is located outside india for which i did not pay any consideration for which i did not pay any consideration can we say if that person is my related person situated outside india from whom i have imported any particular services which i am going to use it in the course or furtherance of business even if the consideration paid was zero then too this will be considered as a deemed supply are you clear with this so ma'am what's the difference there also it was considered as a supply here also it is considered as a supply are baba there it was with consideration okay there it was with consideration for any particular purpose then it was considered as a supply here here you are importing some services for which you are not paying any consideration but it is imported from a related person or your other establishment from outside india then too it will be considered as a deemed supply okay if i am importing it from any unrelated person for zero consideration then it is not a supply are you clear with this yes c c c c everyone here conclusion everyone here conclusion import of services with consideration with consideration means can we say we are talking about section number 71b okay it can be for personal purpose or it can be for business purpose it was considered as a supply okay but if i am importing it without consideration without consideration means we are talking about schedule number 1 okay i am importing it without consideration and if it is received from a related person or my distinct person from outside india in the course of business in the course of business then it will be considered as a supply okay if i am receiving it from any other person then it will not be considered as a supply are you clear till here everyone yes are you clear till here now listen few clarifications uh, which are given up here now here they have told about some promotional schemes okay some sales promotion schemes or uh, you know different different schemes which are taken out by the companies nowadays to attract the customers now i'm just asking you everyone here free samples and gift now let's say uh, i gave i gave free sample okay i gave free sample of of my product to any particular person free of cost okay to any particular person free of cost can i say if i am giving it to my customers who are unrelated person unrelated person free of cost then can i say it will not be considered as a supply yes then next one okay uh, you must have heard about bogo offers buy one get one free etc okay if you buy one ac remote then you will get one more ac remote free okay it looks free but it is not actually free okay whatever one amount that you pay or amount that you pay for that one ac remote it actually consists the amount for the other ac remote also okay so in that case so in this particular case there is a consideration involved okay whatever price you have paid for one ac remote that is actually the consideration for two ac remotes so here nothing is free okay if nothing is free then this transaction is normally called as supply are you clear with this yes this was all about your schedule number 1 schedule number 1 was talking about deemed supply four pointers coming under schedule number 1 i am again repeating first one permanent transfer or disposal of business assets on which itc has been claimed okay second one was any supply of goods or services between related persons or uh, distinct persons distinct persons uh, in the course or furtherance of business okay and yes one more thing all the four points that we are going to discuss here this is without consideration okay still it is considered as a supply still it is considered as a supply third point was supply of goods by principal to his agent or by agent to his principal uh, that particular agent who was uh, selling or purchasing the goods on his own behalf okay on his own account then in that case then in that case such supply even if it is done for no consideration it will be considered as a supply and the last one last one was importation of services no consideration in the course of business imported from my related persons or my distinct persons distinct persons then it will be considered as a supply are you clear till here yes 
uh, then after that going on to the next point next point is next section is very very simple section number 71a 71a talks about classification of transaction into supply of goods or supply of services okay now we know that we know that it is a supply now we need to just bifurcate that whether it is supply of goods or whether it is supply of services are you clear till here everyone can we start with section number 71a yes and yes one more thing 71a whatever transactions we are going to study here those are listed in schedule number two okay what was schedule number one schedule number one was nothing but your deemed supply okay even if it is done without consideration even if it is done without consideration in the course or further ends of business it will be considered as a supply but in schedule number two in schedule number two we are not going to ascertain whether it is a supply or not a supply it is already ascertained that it is a supply you just need to bifurcate whether it is uh supply of goods or whether it is supply of services very clear till you now the most important thing is ma'am why what is the requirement what is the requirement of the schedule number two okay requirement of schedule number two actually came from the earlier laws in earlier laws what used to happen was there were some things not all but there were some uh, such transactions which were not classified whether it is supply of goods or whether it is supply of services and then there was vat also applicable on it and then there was service tax also applicable on it okay one of the example which i had mentioned earlier also was your restaurant service okay on that vat was also applicable plus service was also applicable now they have done the proper classification so that it is not taxed twice राइट चलो ठीक है नाउ लेट्स गो टू शेड्यूल नंबर टू एवरी वन ईयर नाउ फर्स्ट ट्रांजेक्शन ओके आई एम डूइंग इट फ्रॉम द नोट्स ईयर सो दैट इट विल बी सिंपल नाउ वेन एवर देर इज एनी ट्रांसफर ऑफ टाइटल इन द गुड सेल ओके वेन द टाइटल इज गेटिंग ट्रांसफर देन इट विल बी कंसिडर्ड एज सप्लाई ऑफ गुड्स नॉर्मल सेल ऑफ गुड्स ओके वेन एवर देर इज एनी ट्रांसफर ऑफ राइट इन द गुड्स मीन्स आई एम गिविंग द राइट टू समन टू यूज इट लेट से फॉर एग्जाम्पल देन इट विल बी कॉल्ड एज सप्लाई ऑफ सर्विस एग्जाम्पल रेंटिंग काइंड ऑफ अ थिंग okay then after that whenever there is any transfer of title transfer of title in the goods uh, maybe the property in the goods will pass on at a future date example you must have heard about higher purchase transactions right where the uh, you know title in the property passes at the uh, time when the final installment is paid then to it will be considered as okay higher purchase etc then to it will be considered as supply of goods because ultimately it is not like renting it is just like sale then second one very very important this is para number 2 okay this is para number 2 land and building okay any lease lease now you should be able to give me the answer you, you just have to identify whether it is goods or services okay any lease tenancy easement license to occupy land etc uh, then it will be considered as supply of services then treatment or process if there is any job work any labor activity going okay let's say this is the ac remote i have given it to someone for repairing of it etc it will be called as supply of services then next one see the words from the words itself you should be able to identify transfer of business assets if please don't by heart this okay just go on understanding it transfer of business assets transfer means that is going to be a permanent transfer where the title is also going to go so this will be called as supply of goods then goods held everyone here goods held or used for business i have some goods for my business which are put to personal use just put to personal use i am not selling it i am using it for personal purpose example a company giving a car okay a company giving a car to its employees for their personal use then this will be called as supply of service okay then next one goods forming part of assets of any business carried on by a person who sees this to be a taxable person okay now let's say let's say uh, i have a particular not i okay mr x have a particular business he has some assets okay he has some assets in his business now he is going to wind up okay now he is going to wind up so can i say whatever stock or whatever goods are left with him ultimately which is going to be disposed of then that will be called that particular transaction will be called as supply of goods okay then the next one next one renting of immovable property as the name suggest it is going to be supply of services yes one important point to be covered up here is in case of renting of immovable property there is something called as tenancy rights okay there is something called as tenancy rights now let's say let's say there is a owner okay there is a owner of a particular house or a commercial property let's say anything okay I, and i am the tenant i have been staying on rent with this particular person okay i have got some special one is i am occupying this particular property so i am i'll i'm paying rent for it 
okay now i have got some special rights from him okay to use the property in a particular manner etc for which for which he has charged tenancy premium for from me okay from for which he has charged tenancy premium for me which is over and above the rent so they are telling that this tenancy premium this tenancy premium is also forming this is also going to come under gst okay now let's say i was the tenant okay i am vacating now i am vacating this particular premises and i am going to give you on rent means after me you are going to come and stay here on rent i am also transferring see rent you are going to pay to the owner okay i am also transferring the tenancy rights to you i am transferring the tenancy rights that see i had got these tenancy rights from the owner now i am giving it to you you have to pay me 5 lakh rupees for the same so this 5 lakh is not a rent but still it will be liable to gst because it was clarified okay because it was clarified by way of this particular circular that tenancy premium is also liable to gst very clear with this okay then construction construction of complex building civil structures etc okay construction includes your additions alterations replacements revamping remodeling of an existing structure etc if you are do getting this construction done okay if you are getting this uh, construction done then this is called as this uh, if you are providing this construction services then this is called as supply of services but one thing is very very important here is except ayo one second hmm except except where the entire consideration except where the entire consideration has been received after issuance of completion certificate uh, or after its first occupation whichever is earlier okay means what are they trying to say construction service construction service will be called as supply of service means there will be a gst applicable on such construction service but if but if we have done the construction and we have got the entire consideration after receiving the cc okay after receiving the cc or after the first person came and occupied that property out of these two whichever is earlier then in that case that transaction is not at all liable to gst that we are going to study in schedule number 3 now are you able to understand this yes now uh, this completion certificate is issued by whom this completion certificate is normally issued by the competent authority competent authorities who competent authorities any authority or any government which is authorized to issue this completion certificate and when it is not mandatory to take it from the government then this completion certificate can be given by a certified or a registered architect or a chartered engineer or a licensed surveyor okay if government is required to give in a particular state then only we, cc has to be given only by the government but if it is not mandatorily to be given by the government then in that case it can be given by any of these persons okay so if if entire consideration is received with entire consideration is received after the cc means we can in short we can say that when the entire consideration is received once the property got ready then in that case there is no gst applicable on it okay then you cannot call it as a supply of goods or supply of services understanding this but if some consideration was received before some consideration was received after or entire consideration was received before then it will be called as supply of service okay then after that next one temporary transfer or permitting use or enjoyment of any intellectual property i have given my patent to someone else to use it it is supply of service okay then uh, any particular person is developing some software etc for me again it is supply of service okay next important point everyone here next important point agreeing to obligation to refrain from an act that is someone is telling me arpita don't do this if you don't do this i will pay you this much amount okay or to tolerate an act or situation i am tolerating a particular act for which i am going to get a consideration okay or to do an act arpita do this act will give you this much amount okay if if any such type of services are being provided then in that case then in that case it will be considered as supply of service okay one example one example you must have heard about uh, uh, in Uh, mo uh, just like monopoly kind of a thing okay if there are two service providers in a particular let's say there are two internet service providers in a particular area okay and this area is mine i tell to the internet service provider i'll pay you 10 lakh rupees but you cannot provide services to my area's customer okay can he say can he say he is refraining from an act okay he is refraining from selling the this thing 
so in that case in that case whatever consideration i pay him okay whatever consideration i pay him on that gst will be applicable okay but yes there was a circular okay there was a circular in this regard what about gst on liquidated damages okay in a contract if there are any damages which have been suffered what about the gst on that what about the gst on compensation and penalty arising out of breach of contract or other provisions of the law so they are telling that let's say let's say i have we we too have entered into a particular contract and we have specifically entered into an agreement that if there is a breach of contract from either of the parties okay from either of the parties then the other party is going to compensate the first party with so and so amount means specifically it has been agreed there is an independent agreement for that there is a promise that if there is a breach then so much amount of consideration will flow okay if all these conditions are fulfilled then in that case yes it will be considered as a supply are you clear with this yes and for that we have got some examples etc also coming up there then next one transfer of right to use any goods transfer of right to use any goods example i have given my plant and machinery or hired to someone again it will be considered as supply of service this is common point huh? this column is common can you see this yes it is considered as supply of services then after that then after that the next one yes sixth one again very very important the two points which created havoc in your vat and service tax uh, works contract supplies uh, first of all works contract supply what do you mean by works contract works contract is such a contract okay generally it, this term is used in the context of building construction etc where okay building construction etc of an immovable property specifically construction of an immovable property where where goods as well as services are involved okay where goods as well as services are involved so there is always a confusion whether it will be considered as supply of goods or whether it will be considered as supply of services now schedule 2 says that you have to deem okay you have to assume that it is a supply of service okay then after that restaurant and outdoor catering services this i had just mentioned in the beginning of this particular schedule this also they have deemed that this is considered as supply of are you clear with this yes so points to be remembered here okay points to be remembered here works contract restaurant you have to compulsorily remember okay then this circular about liquidated damages these three points these three points are to be remembered mandatorily we have taken so many examples when we had done our normal lectures okay then after that the next point to be remembered here is this construction okay normal construction services provided where the entire consideration is received after okay if the entire consideration is re received out of it is totally outside the purview of gst okay if entire is received before or if some before some after then this will be then gst will be applicable and it will be considered a supply of services clear till here yes okay last part of section number uh, 7 second last part of section number 7 now here we are talking about schedule number 3 okay what was schedule number 1 schedule number 1 was talking about deemed supply that is even if there was no consideration involved then too it was considered as a supply schedule number 2 just gave us the bifurcation whether it is supply of goods or whether it is supply of services and schedule number 3 schedule number 3 says that whatever uh, points we are going to study below these are considered as non supplies okay what do you mean by non supplies non supplies means it is not considered as a supply and if it is not considered as a supply then in that case there will be no gst applicable that is divided into three parts okay first one transaction specifically given in schedule number 3 okay can you recollect one of the pointers that we had done in schedule number 3 one of the pointers that we did in schedule number 3 what was that Uh, employer and employee yes okay even though they are related person as per schedule 1 it will be considered as a supply but schedule number 3 comes and says that this is not considered as a supply so there will be some supplies given here then after that there will be some non supplies notified by way of a notification and some non supplies clarified by way of a clarification yes uh, now let's start with schedule number 3 first one services given by an employee to the employer okay services given by an employee to the employer in the course of his employment normally employee gives services to the employer and for that employer pays salary to the employee okay they are telling that this is this uh, does not amount to supply okay this does not amount to supply and can we also recollect along with that perquisites given by the employer to the employees also in the form of consideration because that was agreed as per the agreement 
so even that was not considered as a supply what about gifts gifts up to 50000 not a supply but gifts exceeding rupees 50000 totally will be considered as a supply are you clear with this? Yes. Acha. Then now what if, what if director is there, director of a company is there. He is providing some services to the company and company pays him director's remuneration. Okay. Now in this case, if the remuneration paid by the company to the director, if, is in, if it is in the nature of salary, that is TDS is getting deducted under section 192. That is TDS on salary means it is employer employee relationship so this will not be considered this will not be liable to gst okay but if the director is providing the services to the employer uh, in professional capacity okay in professional capacity that is tds is getting deducted under 194 jtds and professional fees then in that case there is no employer employee relationship and therefore it will be liable for gst understanding this okay so first one was services provided by employee to the employer next one next one is again important simple services provided by any court or any tribunal established under any law for the time being in force okay any law for the time being in force now what is the relevance of time being in force time being in force means we are talking only about the indian laws Okay, we are talking only about the Indian law. So, services provided by any court or any tribunal. Now, this court or tribunal means what? A district court is providing. Hey, what services do the court or tribunal provides? They take court fees from us and they give judgments. Na? They give decisions, etc. So, whatever court fee we paid to the court or whatever fees we paid to them, that is not liable for GST. Okay, now what all courts or what all forums will be included here? Just like I am giving you some example. District court then your session courts, then your special courts, then your high court, supreme court, etc. They will be included. Then you must have heard about consumer forums, okay, consumer dispute redressal commission, etc. These are also just like courts, right? These are also just like courts. So even any services provided by them, okay, any services provided by them will not be liable to GST. Are you clear with this? Yes, then the third point which is non-supply. Okay, third point which is non-supply, very very uh, simple point are here. Functions performed by member of parliament, MPs, you must have heard na, MPs, MLAs, uh, uh, now uh, people who are sitting in the parliament, okay, they attend the sessions, they attend the parliament uh, meetings, etc. They, they are performing some functions for which they get, get paid. Okay, so any functions performed by member of parliament, member of state legislature, member of municipalities, member of other local authority. They are doing, they say that they are doing work for the public. So any functions performed by them that is considered as the non-supply, therefore there will be no GST on it. And similarly, duties performed by any person who holds any post in pursuance of provisions of the constitution. Example, if constitution says that India should be having a president, a vice president, and so on. So, can we say the president of India is also performing some duty for us or for India, vice president, etc, etc. These people, okay, um, chairman of the UPSC, okay, then your uh, president, vice president, then your prime minister, yes, all these people, whatever duties they are performing, they are getting uh, like uh, the money for the same, they are getting some consideration for the same on which there is no GST applicable and third point in that duty performed by any person as a chairperson or a mem or members or, or a director as a chairperson, as a member or as a director in a body established by central government, state government or local authority. Example, uh, you must have heard about SEBI. Yes, so there is a chairman of SEBI, there are members of SEBI, okay, there is a director of SEBI, just SEBI is just one example of one particular establishment formed by the central government, okay, so these people are also discharging their functions, so they will be getting reimbursed or they will be getting uh, compensated for the duties they are performing, that is considered as not a supply, therefore there will be no GST applicable on the same, right. Next one, services of funeral, burial, crematorium or mortuary including transportation of the deceased person. So, uh, the people who provide the funeral services, uh, burial services, crematorium services or even the, you know, ambulances. Let's say for example, ambulances which are helping in providing the transportation of the uh, deceased persons etc. They charge money from us but that is not liable for GST. Next para, point number 5, okay, para number 5, very, very important. Para number 5 to which schedule are we doing? Para number 5 to our schedule number 
थ्री सेल ऑफ लैंड ओके सेल ऑफ लैंड इज नाइदर सप्लाई ऑफ गुड्स नॉट सप्लाई ऑफ सर्विसेज फॉर्गेट अबाउट लैंड देर विल बी नो जी एस टी एप्लीकेबल ऑन सेल ऑफ लैंड एंड सिमिलरली फॉर सेल ऑफ बिल्डिंग ओके फॉर सेल ऑफ बिल्डिंग सेल ऑफ लैंड एंड सब्जेक्ट टू पैरा नंबर फाइव बी ऑफ शेड्यूल टू सेल ऑफ बिल्डिंग नाउ डू यू रिकलेक्ट इन शेड्यूल नंबर टू वी जस्ट नाउ स्टडीड अबाउट दैट कंस्ट्रक्शन सर्विसेज ओके लेट्स से देर इज अ कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ बिल्डिंग ओके लेट्स से देर इज अ कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ बिल्डिंग फॉर विच एंटायर कंसिडरेशन फॉर विच एंटायर कंसिडरेशन वॉज रिसीव्ड After issue of completion certificate or first occupation, whichever is earlier, then in that case, I told you there will be no GST applicable. That is no GST applicable as per para number five of schedule number three. Are you clear with this? Yes. So one thing to be remembered here, everyone. First thing to be remembered here is sale of land does not attract GST. Okay. Another thing is in case of sale of building, if entire consideration, uh, if entire consideration is received afterwards, okay, then in that case there is no GST applicable on the same okay sometimes it can so happen sometimes it can so happen that there is um, there is a piece of land okay there is a piece of land and um, on that particular land before selling it to someone else you have laid down some water lines drainage pipelines etc electricity lines etc and then you, means you have developed the land and then you have sold it okay you have developed the land then you have sold it then even the sale of such developed land does not attract gst means if you sell a barren land or if you sell a developed land there will be no gst applicable on it yes but can i say you must have taken services from someone you must have taken some services from someone for developing that land he can charge gst from you because he is not selling the land are you clear with this yes okay then after that para number 6 okay para number 6 is also very very important here see what is this para number 6 talking about para number 6 says that any actionable claims okay any actionable claims other than lottery betting gambling etc okay one or two simple examples which i can uh, give you for this actionable claims is just like your uh, fixed deposit that you keep with the bank okay or promissory notes or bank guarantee etc they are telling that these are your actionable claims these are totally considered as non supply okay example when you redeem your fd okay when you produce your fd certificate with the bank and you take the money from the bank that is an actionable claim okay you are asking for the debt from the bank then in that case it is not liable to gst at all but actionable uh, uh, then in that case then in that case it is not liable to gst but lottery betting and gambling okay lottery betting and gambling this will be liable to gst they have specifically told you your actionable claims other than lottery betting and gambling so they have kept it very very clear lottery betting gambling is going to come under the purview of gst but actionable claims apart from this okay actionable claims apart from this like unsecured loans unsecured debentures bills of exchange bank guarantee fixed deposits etc these are not liable to gst okay then last two points here everyone seventh point and the eighth point uh out and out supplies okay seven point out and out supply means what now let's say you are here sitting here in india you have one source in us and you have another source in uk okay example you are purchasing some goods from us and you want to sell it to a customer who is sitting in uk okay here in you are sitting here in india you are not bringing the goods here in india you are going to sell it from by sitting in india you are selling it from us to uk this is called as can i say both the transactions are happening in non taxable territory means without the goods being entering into india this type of a transaction is called as out and out supply that is merchant trading or merchant trading okay this is not considered as a supply for the purpose of so government will cannot make applicable gst you cannot make gst applicable on this okay and the last point last point coming up here is uh two points are going to be there here first one uh supply of now let's say you imported some goods okay uh, you imported some goods you have warehoused okay you have uh, kept the goods in a warehouse at the customs port okay you have not yet cleared it for home consumption means you have not cleared the goods you have not paid the custom duty on it and you have not taken it brought it to your own go down okay so uh, now when the goods are kept in the customs warehouse only you have imported just now it came from the ship or by air etc it is kept in the custom bonded warehouse and from there itself you are selling it to someone okay from there itself you are selling it to someone so they are telling that so they uh, they are telling that this is not liable to 
GST. Okay, till the time you have not cleared it for home consumption means your um, GST liability cannot get attracted. Okay, means your GST liability cannot get attracted. Very clear with this. Okay, and uh, one more point coming up here is, one more point coming up here is, let's say, let's say you have imported some goods. Okay, uh, this is nothing but your, uh, uh, I'll just give an example. If let's say if you have imported any particular goods and the goods are in transit, okay, the goods are in waters, let's say for example, okay, uh, the goods have been dispatched from that particular place, you have not yet received it, okay, you have the invoice ready, means as soon as the goods come to India, you will get the goods cleared. But before the goods reach into India, okay, before the goods reach into India, you sell it to someone else. Okay, means again, can we say this is before clearance for home consumption, you have sold it to someone. Okay, so ma'am, what's the difference between this point and the earlier point? In the earlier one, the goods was already kept in the custom bonded warehouse. Now the goods are in waters. Okay, the goods are in transit and before you even see the goods, you have sold it. On this also, there is no GST applicable. Very clear with this? Yes. So, these are the eight pointers. These are the eight pointers. These are the eight pointers which are considered as non-supplies, right? These are considered as non-supplies mentioned, specified under schedule number 3. Can we revise everyone? What was the first point? The first point was any services provided by the employee to the employer in the course of his employment. Don't forget the gift point. Okay, next transaction was any services provided by court or tribunal. Court or tribunal. Third one was any functions performed by that member of parliament, chairman of any particular establishment or any person who is holding the post because of any constitution or uh, India's constitution obviously. The next point was services provided of funeral, crematorium, burial, mortuary including transportation of the deceased person. Then para 5 was very very important. Sale of land will never attract GST even if it is a barren land or a developed land and sale of building will not attract GST if entire consideration is received after issuance of uh, completion certificate or first occupation whichever is earlier. The next point was actionable claims other than betting, lottery and gambling. Uh, that will not be liable to GST. Seventh and eighth point was uh, about your uh, seventh and eighth point is not actually relevant for CA intermediate students. It has to be referred specifically by the CA final students. So seventh point, seventh point is talking about what? It is talking about out and out supplies. You are sitting here in India, you are doing merchant trading from one country to another country and eighth point was you have imported the goods. In one case, you have received the goods, it is kept in the custom bonded warehouse and you have sold it and in the next case, if the goods are still in transit and before even you receive it, you have sold it to someone else at that time, there will be no GST applicable. Okay, When that person, the person to whom you have sold it, when that person gets the goods cleared for home consumption, at that time, uh, custom duty and GST will be applicable on the same. Are you clear till here? Yes. So, do you recollect? We I told you that there will be three parts here. Non supplies will was divided into three parts. First one was schedule number three, then notification, and then clarification. Okay, now schedule number three is done. Now let's go to notification part. Some supplies are notified as non supplies. Okay, some supplies are notified only two or uh, are uh, notified as non supplies by way of a notification. See what are they telling? First of all, activity in relation to panchayat, municipality functions, etc. Now, there are certain services, okay, there are certain uh, certain services uh, which are entrusted, okay, which are given, which are given to panchayats under article number 243G, article number 243G means we are talking about constitution or there are some services by way of an activity in relation to a function entrusted to municipality, means we give, the government gives, central government, state government, etc., See the wordings everyone here. Government is empowered to notify the activities or transactions undertaken by the central government, state government or local authority in which they are engaged as public authorities as the activities or transaction which shall be treated neither as supply of goods nor as supply of services. So any activity, any activity which is entrusted to the panchayat or any activity which is entrusted to the municipality because they have to do such example maintenance of road, maintenance of street lights, etc. These are considered as neither supply of goods nor supply of services. And the next one, next one is talking about grant of alcoholic liquor license. Okay, now alcoholic liquor license is alcoholic liquor is totally outside the purview of GST. Okay, now alcoholic liquor is a matter which is still kept with the 
uh, state governments. Okay, now if you want to sell liquor in any particular state, then you need to take the license from the state government. Yes, now if the government is providing you the liquor license, government will take a consideration, that consideration, okay, consideration only for sale of liquor license, okay, not any other license, that is considered as neither supply of goods nor supply of services. Let's say government gives me a license to extract natural resources, do mining etc, that is liable. We are talking only about which license, we are talking only about alcoholic liquor license. Okay, so two, two activities here, okay, two activities are totally considered, two activities are totally considered as uh, non-supplies, okay, first one is any activity done, any activity done in relation to panchayat or municipality functions and the next one was grant of alcoholic liquor license. Then the last one, third one, third one was by way of clarification. So, this is clarification means they are telling that logically it is non-supply. If you have any doubt, we have given a clarification to you for the same. Okay, so non-supply is clarified by way of clarification. Just try to understand this everyone. Now, whenever there is interstate movement, okay, let's say this is, let's say this is a bus. Okay, let's say this is a bus and there are some passengers sitting here. Okay, and there are some goods also which is loaded. Transportation happens by way of goods also. Okay, this is the bus. This bus moves from one place to another. Okay, this bus moves from one place to another. Means it is providing services to the passengers. Okay, providing transportation services to the passengers. Normally that is a supply. Okay, that is a supply. But now can we say bus is also moving from one place to another? Okay, let's say bus is moving. It is an interstate bus. It is moving from Maharashtra to uh, Gujarat. Let's say it is going from Maharashtra to Gujarat. Okay, does it mean there is a sale of bus also? No, the bus is going to come back. Okay, it is going to take the passengers from here to here and then it is going to again bring the passengers from here to here. Okay, so here this particular conveyance or this particular mode of transport is just used for the purpose of providing another transportation service. Okay, so here... You cannot say that there is a transfer of bus also. Are bus is going but there is no sale of bus that is happening here. So, there will be no GST applicable on the value of bus. Okay, GST will be applicable only on the value of services, transportation services provided. Logical. Okay. Then after that, the next one. Similarly, interstate movement of rigs, tools and spares and all the goods on the wheels. Okay, now let's take the same example. Okay, let's take the same example. Let's say there is a particular bus. Okay, uh, or let's say there is a uh, uh, interstate, any other mode of transport that is going from one place to another. Can we say generally in the buses etc, trucks etc, trailers etc, we keep some spare parts. We, like if suppose there is a breakdown of the vehicle, agar vehicle beech mein kharab ho jata hai, if there is any breakdown of the vehicle, then we can use those spare parts and we can repair, do the repairing etc. Means the spares travel from one state to another state. If the, there is no breakdown of the bus, the spares come back again to over state. Means is there any transfer of, if there is only a physical transfer of spares, na, there is no sale that is happening. So there will be no GST applicable. Are you clear with this? Yes. Chalo, so this was this was yo, this was all about your schedule number one, two, and three, and your section number seven. Okay, I'll just show you a summary thing. See if you can recollect with the help of this. Everyone here. We started from section number seven one a seven one chota a. Everyone here. Huh. Can you see this table everyone? Yes. Now here we are talking about supply. Okay. Supply includes what and supply excludes what. First of all, supply includes normal. Huh? This was your by default definition. Supply of any goods or services for consideration done in the course or furtherance of business. That was included in section number 71A. Okay. Then next one activities or transaction by a person that remember joint venture, housing society. So activities or transactions done by any entity with its members then those two were considered as separate persons therefore even that will be considered as a supply yes it is done in the course of business and it is done for a consideration then importation of services for consideration whether for personal purpose or whether for any other purpose or for business purpose even that was considered as a supply okay then the next one deemed supply deemed supply was given in schedule number one right 
four paras, four paras that we did in schedule number one. Can you recollect what were the four paras that we did under schedule number one? Para number one, para number one was talking about permanent disposal or transfer of business assets on which input tax credit has been already claimed. Second one was any supply of goods or services between related persons or between distinct persons. Uh, again, all these transactions were without consideration. Okay, all these transactions were without consideration in the course of business, they, still it will be considered as a supply. Then para 3 was supply of goods by principal to agent or by agent to principal where that agent uh, has done the transaction on his own account and he has in, issued the invoice in his own name. And last one, para number 4, para number 4 was talking about importation of services from my related person or from my establishment outside India, related person outside India or establishment outside India for zero consideration but only for the in the course or furtherance of business then these four transactions these four transactions were considered as even if it were done for no consideration then too it will be considered as a supply okay then we studied about those excludes okay in excludes three parts were there one was your negative list Okay, negative list was given in schedule number 3 plus notification was given plus clarification was given. Okay, in notification, in notification we had two points. One was that panchayat and municipality functions and next one was sale of alcoholic liquor license. Okay, then plus clarification was that nonsense point that bus going from one place to another is not transfer of bus. Okay, and in schedule 3 we studied 8 pointers total in schedule number 3. Important pointers in that, important pointers in that was uh, employer employee okay then court tribunal then sale of land barren or developed land sale of building afterwards right then that uh, prime minister president etc if they are rendering any services any activities any transactions any services provided by them will not be considered as a supply right then actionable claims other than lottery betting gambling funeral services etc okay then after that uh, out and out supplies merchant trading okay and then uh, the goods were imported but not cleared for home consumption and before it got cleared for home consumption we have sold it right almost all the points we have revised here uh, in your negative list total eight pointers were there okay and in between these two we did schedule number two where we did a bifurcation whether it is supply of goods or services okay i am asking you a few questions everyone works contract service was deemed as supply of services then restaurant service was also deemed as supply of service Okay, then uh, construction services, construction services, obviously, obviously when it is liable to GST, that is when the entire consideration was not received afterwards, then in that case, it was considered a supply of service. Okay, for other points, how can you remember it? If there is any transfer of title, if there is any transfer of title, it will be considered a supply of goods. Okay, if you have just given the right to use it temporarily, etc., then it will be called a supply of services. Very clear with this? Chalo, then after that, then after that, let's go to the uh, next part, everyone. We are done with section number 7. Yes, and one last point, one last small point was there in section number uh, 7, everyone. Yes, here it is. Supply liable for GST. Okay, now, first we need to understand whether it is a supply or it is not a supply. Okay, once you come to know, once you come to know that yes, it is a supply, then two parameters are mandatory. Okay, I am not putting so much emphasis here because this you will understand as then when we build our uh, GST, IDT. Okay, so supply, supply should be done by a taxable person. Now, what do you mean by taxable person? Taxable person is a either a registered person or a person who is liable, he, who has already become liable to get his registration. He should do a supply, he should do a supply and the supply should be a taxable supply. Means it should not be an exempted supply. Remember I told you in the beginning of the chapter, also yes Chal. now going on to the last part of the chapter everyone section number eight now what is there in section number eight section number eight talks about composite and mixed supplies okay composite and mixed supplies now what do you mean by composite supply if if the supply has been done by a person okay if i have done a particular supply to a recipient of the supply and this supply has two or more taxable supplies Okay, I have done a composite supply which includes two or more taxable supply of goods or services or a combination of the two to the recipient and these services are naturally bundled together. Means I have not artificially brought them together. These are generally given together only. 
and out of these supplies one of it one of the supply is the main supply or one of the supply is a principal supply then in such a case such a supply will be called as a composite supply ma'am can you give an example for the same yes now let's say i am selling you a particular product okay i am selling you a particular product let's say uh, let's say ac remote okay and this ac remote is let's say for 400 rupees okay along with this i have charged freight okay transportation courier charges i have charged from you 50 rupees so 450 rupees total i am charging from you now here two things are provided one is sale of ac remote and the next one is supply of freight services transportation services i have provided you so can we say there is a combination of two or more supplies coming up here Achha, which of the two is the main supply main supply is obviously ac remote okay otherwise there is no use of the freight at all there is no use of the transportation at all if there is no sale happening there so the principal supply is sale of ac remote such a supply is called as a composite supply and in this case okay and in this case can we say the 400 rupees ac remote that's that is goods and 50 rupees that i have charged you that is for the service that i am providing you right that is for the service that i am providing you now in this case now in this case can i say i'll be charging total 450 rupees from you this 450 now let's say this goods are taxable individually if we say these goods are taxable at the rate of 18 percent let's say it is taxable at the rate of 18 percent and let's say this service is taxable at the rate of 12 percent just an example i am giving it to you so should we do the by calculation separately they are telling that no if it is a composite supply okay if it is a composite supply then no need to do the calculation separately whatever is the rate of tax on the principal supply your yeah, principal supply supply of goods so whatever is the rate applicable on the goods make that rate applicable on the total amount so on entire 450 you can tax it at the rate of 18 percent as if it is a composite supply are you clear with this yes okay okay just like everyone here just like uh, when you book a uh, train ticket okay and you include meals also in it okay you include meals also in it then in such a case then in such a case the price that you are paying for the food can we say that is uh, like train ticket plus food is a composite supply on the entire amount whose rate should be applicable railway tickets uh, rate of gst should be applicable because obviously you are not traveling in the train only for the food okay the main purpose there is traveling okay similarly similarly hospitals whenever any particular patient gets admitted in the hospital okay because he is ill or for uh, curing any particular disease he gets food there okay generally it's it is said that inpatient uh, 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 inpatients are given the food which is given which has to be taken from the hospital only okay so we are charged for the food also that we get okay so now here we did not go to the hospital for the food the main supply here was the hospital services so this is the composite supply on the total amount the rate which is applicable on the hospital services or the doctor services that will be applicable right so some examples etc are given for your reference you can just refer it once everyone Achha, now uh, some some clarifications okay this is very very important your cbic has given some clarification as to what is the principal supply okay as to what is the principal supply and this is mandatory we have to follow this anyhow okay now let's say i wanted to get my idt books printed everyone here okay i have made the content okay i have made the content i want to get the books printed okay so i go to a particular uh, let's, let's say a particular printer i tell him that i will give you the content and you just print my books can i say he's providing there will be two things here the he will take a paper on that he will do the printing okay and he will give me the entire book here so can we say there is a supply of paper also and there is supply of printing service also right now here now here they are telling that content is given by the author okay content is given by the recipient of the supply so in this case so in this case the principal supply principal supply is the supply of printing okay very simple example which i can give you here is now let's say i give you this particular book i give you this particular paper okay is the paper important or the content important there obviously the content written on that paper is more important so they are telling that printing service printing service becomes the principal supply so whatever is the rate of tax applicable to the principal supply that should be applicable right Achha. then similarly next one okay next one let's say i go to a printer and i tell to a printer that i want some uh, 
I want some uh, tissue papers. I want some tissue papers on which I want my logo so that I can use. You must have seen na, in restaurants etc. It is very very common thing. So I go to a printer. I tell him that I want con content here. Uh, like um, I tell him that okay, this is my logo. I want it uh, to be printed on all the tissue papers, on all the envelopes etc. And you just give it to me. Okay. So he says that okay, I will do the printing and I will give you the. Now then he delivers the entire tissue box to me on which my logo is printed. Everything is proper. Now here, what is important? What is important? Can we say your tissue paper and its usage is more important than the logo? So here they are telling that the principal supply is equal to supply of goods. Okay, here the principal supply is what? Prin principal supply is supply of goods and printing becomes ancillary here. Okay, printing becomes ancillary. Here. Are you clear with this? Then food supply to patients. Food supply to patients. I have already discussed about it. The next one, activity of bus body building. Okay, activity of bus body building. Okay, let's say, let's say there is a particular bus. Okay, let's say there is a particular bus which is not assembled with its cover etc. Okay, so I take that particular bus to a bus body builder and I tell him that you need to put a cover on it, you need to put the glasses in it, window glasses etc on it. So in this case, in this case, so in this case, this particular activity is called a supply of service. Okay, because he like more than the parts that he is going to put here. Can I say the thing that plays more importance here is the service that he is giving me of building that particular bus. So this is called a supply of your supply of service will be the principal supply. And then next one that is re-threading of tires. Okay, re-threading of tires means what? Now there are some revamped tires. Now there are some worn out tires. Okay, ekdam purana. As a khara, as a tires. Okay, there are some tires, and then you go to these people who provide these services, and then he does that some work on it, and he does the revamping of the tires. So can we say? Can we say he is doing a re-threading of the tires? So here the principal supply will be the supply of service. He will be using some accessories. He will be using some petty raw materials in it. But can we say his skill is more important here? So this is considered as supply of service. Are you uh, understanding here? Okay, maybe he is using some rubber or he is using some other raw material in making it a good one. Okay, that doesn't matter here. Here the most important thing here is uh, supply of service. Okay, now let's say he makes, he does re-threading of tires and he keeps some tires ready. And now he is selling the entire tire. What happened in the first one? I had some worn out tires. I took it to him and he did the re-threading and he gave it to me. That was supply of service. Okay, now I go to a tire wala person. I tell him that I want a re-threaded tire. He is selling the entire re-threaded tire to me. Can, we, can I say here he is selling the entire goods to me? Then it will be considered as supply of goods. Simple everyone. Yes. Okay, going on to the next concept, last concept of, of uh, section number 8, uh, it is talking about mixed supply. Okay, just now we spoke about composite supply. In composite supply, which rate of GST was applicable? The rate of GST as it was applicable to the principal supply. Now, what is going to happen in case of mixed supply? Now, when they are telling that when two or more, okay, when two or more individual supplies of goods or services are combined artificially, Okay, are combined artificially and given together means a conjunction, a conjunction of it is given together for a single price. Okay, uh, artificially you are bringing two things together, you are selling it together for a, like you have, you have made a hamper out of it and you are selling it together. Then in that case, then in that case, which rate of GST will be applicable? So they are telling that you have purposely brought these two things together. Whereas these two things are independent supplies. Therefore, the rate of GST that will be applicable on the total amount will be highest rate that is applicable on the individual items. Okay, let's say, let's say nowadays there is a fashion, okay, there is a trend of chocolate hampers, gift hampers, etc. Now, I made a gift basket, okay, in which I kept some chocolates, okay, I kept some Lay's wafers, etc. And I kept, um, let's say, I kept uh, chocolate and Lay's, etc. in this, okay, and I am selling it, okay, and I am selling it, let's say, for 2000 rupees, entire gift hamper, and I kept some sweets, etc. on it, and I am selling it for 2000 rupees here, okay. Now, can we, now, is it compulsory to sell all the three things together? 
no okay just like i gave you the example of composite supply composite supply in that i gave you the example of uh, the thing uh, your uh, sale of ac remote and that freight in that case we have to give those two uh, services or two things together but here it is not mandatory to give these two things these three things together we have artificially bundled and we are giving it for an attractive price or whatever it is so they are telling that on this 2000 Uh, now let's say on chocolate there is a gst applicable of 18% on lays let's say gst applicable is equal to 12% on sweets let's say gst applicable is equal to 5% so on this 2000 the rate of 18% will be applicable here we are not supposed to find out what is principal and what is not okay here whatever is the rate here whatever is the rate highest rate applicable okay that will be applicable on the total amount. are you clear with this yes that is so special about the mix supply okay the main distinguish between the two in case of composite supply in case of composite supply it was naturally bundled okay whereas in case of mixed supply it is artificially bundled just keep that thing in your mind now in this case you are, we have many examples given up here see canned food sweets chocolates cakes etc have been combined together and then we are selling it okay uh, uh, water bottles sold along with refrigerator water bottle so uh, what what combination you have artificially bundled it together so it is a mix supply therefore highest rate will be applicable in case of mix supply just remember highest rate will be applicable whereas in case of uh, composite supply the rate of gst as applicable on the principal supply that will be applicable yes done